Hello, students. So I'd like to uh, encourage you to enable your video, not audio, but video, okay? Okay, students, now it's time to start. So I try to start at base. So all of you are welcome to the first uh, okay. okay. So the, the base problem is best roles. No, there are types of characters. Actually, the sounds uh, of the characters. One is consonant, and the other is all. You know, if you are masking, M, S, K, I, N, uh, so, sorry, M, S, K, N, and A, and I are the mode. Okay? So, I'd like to talk about that uh, like masking the vowels by the list constructor. Actually, there's a list constructor, but you don't need a list constructor. Since you can construct a list using uh, this record notation, so this is a list, as you know. Then, and then you can assign a list of numbers one, two, three, okay? But the same list can be made using a range, which is, um, which is uh, generalized gen generator. So let's take a look of range one to four. You will produce, it is expected to produce um, the same numbers to ls, but it is not true. So when you type ns, it is just a range object. So when you take a look the inside, you, you have to iterate on it. For example, for n in ns, and you may print n, okay? Then the contents of the generator is is appearing, but when you need some list of them, then you can make it explicit uh, by applying explicit list constructor. Okay, so you can make a list of ns, which will return truly a list. Okay, which is same to same to the first contents of ls. Okay, ls equals ms is true. Okay, even though the id of ls is different, id of ms is, even though they are different objects, they are sharing the same contents, so, so the equality test will return true. Okay, so today I'd like to print, print, Hello, but I'd like to print it in reverse. So how can you do that? You need some uh, a method, which is called R print, R print, reverse print. So let's make it. So make a new file. And you'd like to type the coding directive, coding UTF-8, DFR print S is making a list of it then. Okay, list of string S. And S reverse, which will make a reverse, reversing the list S. And 
it will like to print them using into a string using join ls. Okay, so if name equals main, then you may you may set my word is hello. I'd like to print it my word and I'd like to print the reverse of it r print my word which is defined in the previous function okay so save this uh, you may save this save as uh, the code Python 2020 Laboratory 4 Why? <laughs> Laboratory 4 <laughs> Sorry uh, It is R print the pi Okay, reverse print the pi So you may execute this Hello and the reversed word Orle is printed. Okay. So, how can I do that? Is that if you'd like to my word word into Python, then you can print my word Python, but our print my word will print it reverse. So how can I do that? List, making a list of them. So you can save this as characters CS as a list of my word. Okay, and you can check it. Yes, what is the value of CS? Those are list. Okay, so you can make it reverse. Reverse it and you can check it is really reverse. And Converting this into a string, you can do that using a join method in a string. So join of CS will produce no type, <laughs> no type which is just the reverse of Python. Okay, um, but you can join it with additional uh, additional connectors. Join CS like this okay so th this is the um this is the magic uh, und uh underlying of the r print so we would like to take a look at the laboratory sheet again the list constructor can be considered as a value returning function why it is returning a really a list okay so it, the value returned by the list constructor is the least constructed okay so it, it can be considered as a value returning function so you may use a value returning version of this uh, r print so rather than the name of r print so like let's make it more this with a descriptive name so reverse string which returns the reverse string of the argument so let's make it by modifying this rather than r print reverse string of s, which is actually making a list of them, same as before, reverse. But instead of print it, it is return joined string joined um, joined version of the list okay then you can use normal print rather than r print you can use normal print but in this case you may reverse word to be printed and reverse word is the version of reverse string of my word Okay. 
So let's save this and running this. Reverse word. Sorry. It should be made as reverse word. Okay. So hello, or is printed as expected. So do you have any questions up to here? So, okay. So let's think about the black box rule. So according to the black box rule, you can do the similar thing with the reverse risk uh, as far as the behavior of the function is same. So in, in this uh, simple function reverse string, you made a wrist and make a reverse, apply the reverse method, and then join it again to get the string. But you can do the similar thing using a string um, slice. So let's test it with this small uh, Python shell. Okay, so let's think about that. Uh, you have a uh, my word, okay? Then if you do make a my word with one, two, four, it will return ELN as described before. Okay, so it is counting, selecting the characters from the position one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can do this similar thing with the staff, okay? So if you select my word one to the end, okay? Then you're just uh, excluding the first character whose location is index zero, okay? You know that. So if you have my word from one to one to four or five, one to four, with step two, with step two, it will select from the character at the location one, excluding the location two, including the location three, which is step two, which is the meaning of step two. So this L is not this L, but this L, okay? So you can set my word as a longer word programming programming then my word of one to the end with a step two you will get the second R here and fourth G here and sixth A here and eighth M here, and tenth N here, okay? So this is the meaning of a step. So how about starting from the first? Beginning from the first to the end with step two, we'll get the, uh, get extract the characters of even indices, which, which means that the first and third and fifth characters and so forth. So P here, O here, R here, M, M after N, A here, okay, I here, G here, okay? So what if, if I make my word with step one, it will return, it will return the, the whole characters programming, okay? Then how about my word with negative step? This is actually the reverse, okay? So with this um, insight, you can apply it to here. So rather than this complex reverse string, you can format it with a comment of reason. And then rather than, you can just return 
as where the slice with negative step. Okay, save this and running this is the same result. Okay, so this is the very simple version of river string and we are following the black box rule of the function. We are obeying that. So I didn't change it to return something. I didn't change the parameter. I didn't change it the function name, but just uh, the internals implementations are changing. Okay, so this is a more efficient version of reverse string. Anything will do. So you can do, you can solve the problem with a complex version and you can solve the problem with a simpler version as far as you are obeying the black box rule. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look of today's problem. So programming lab portrait of four is masking the pine. Write a program reading a word and masking the vowels in it. For example, for an input word vowels, we have two vowels here. The second character O is a vowel and first character E is a vowel since it is a member of R, A, E, O, U. Okay. So in English alphabet, you have just five vowels, okay? So if you're masking the vowels with minus character, think of that you, you are making a mask of your face mask and you are just making a mask of your face. So it, we are making a mask of the vowels, the second character and the fourth character. So your program should print V dash W dash which is a mask L S. Okay, so this should be your output. So note that number of vowels in English alphabet is just five. Okay, so how can I get the vowels? You can do that by uh, in function. Okay, so you can check it is H in my word, so you can take it, it is true, since H is the first character. How about H? You can apply that in the list. List of my word, it is also true. Okay, since list of my word is these, num these uh, elements and H is the first element. Okay, so you can apply the similar thing is certain character, if I have a character E, and if C in A, E, I, O, U, sorry, list of A, E, I, O, U, it is true, since C is a vowel. But if I change this as V, so you can, you can do the similar thing using RP. So you can navigate the previous words, okay? So is, is this V is in the list of uh, vowels? First, okay? V in okay but if C is a this is true okay so you can use anything any kinds of you can use list of characters or you can use list or you can use a string to apply the uh, operator in okay so your program reads from the standard input consisting of two lines the input word is given in the first line of the input. So your standard input consists of two lines. The first line is containing the input, input string. And the second line is given in your second uh, input, a second line of input. 
So the masking factor. So the input word consists of low, low cases only. So it is not allowed. Large capital P Python is not allowed here. And the length of, of, the, uh, of the string it should be greater than zero. So your program should print a word with the words masked by the masking character. So let's take a look of the uh, examples. So the first example is the words with the minus, you should print V minus W minus LS as your output. Programming with a star with the words. So P should be printed as is. I should be printed as is since those are consonants, but O should be masked with star. GR star. MM star. NG. Okay. Okay, then there's additional requirements for bonus points. So you should use the enhanced program structure just like this example. Okay. So you can do the same, same thing with this, uh, this ancient structure, okay? So it is still working, but please do not use this kind of naive structure. So you have to use this enhanced version of uh, program structure. But you can change the, change the comparison since the comparison operator is commutative, you can change it, the comparison operator like this. Okay, so let's save this. Running this is the same. Okay, so why this comparison is much um, is allowed? Since the reason is that this is commutative. Okay, this comparison operator, uh, a double equal, double equal is, <laughs> for all this, double equal is equal to, equal to, uh, is associative. This is an associative operator, okay? So, so this is allowed for that. And it is more, uh, more good rather than, <laughs> rather than the previous version because uh, some programmers, uh, some programmers is, uh, is confusing that like this, okay? But in that case, your interpreter is catching your bug, okay? So let's save this and executing this invalid syntax. So assigning, assigning the, uh, to your string literary is not valid, okay? So you can get, you can catch your bug, uh, just, uh, just, uh, uh, actually, your interpreter will catch your bug, so this is a more good style of comparison, okay? And second requirement is that you have to define and use at least one value returning function, okay? As if, as just like the reverse string. So in this function, you are using the term return, okay? So it is a value returning function as, as described in your lecture, uh, online video lecture, uh, no, not online video lecture, but your video lecture. So this version is okay, and this version is okay, but anything will do, but you have to use uh, the value returning function, okay? Who, who is writing this? <laughs> I'm not writing. Okay, so uh, any questions? I, I enable my speaker. 
So if you don't have any question, then please all of you be healthy and take care <laughs> in your very bad situation, okay? So I close this lecture, okay? Thank you all of you joining this lecture.